after James Bond was blown to smithereens at the end of No Time to Die, how on earth are they going to bring him back? Well, I've done some serious thinking, and this is what I came up with. Now, it's not the first time that Bond meets his apparent demise. Ian Fleming was unsure whether to continue with 007 After from Russia with Love. Much to the dismay of his readers at the time, the book ends with Bond collapsing after Rosa Clegg poisons him. Luckily for us, though, he decided to continue. And at the end of You Only Live Twice, he's missing, presumed dead in Japan. Bond is suffering from amnesia and heads for Vladivostok, but it's unclear if he'll ever return. Skyfall borrowed from this when he disappeared after the mission in Turkey. Anyway, I've been thinking about it, and after discarding the completely absurd, mainly, this is what I've come up with. Let me know which of these options you like best. Uh, drop your thoughts below. My current favourite is number six. First is what I'm calling the pre-boot. Until Daniel Craig and the reboot for Casino Royale, the series always had loose continuity. There were some anomalies such as in Honor Majesty's Secret Service when Blofeld doesn't recognise Bond despite meeting him face to face in the previous film, but the audience never really questioned it and that's how we expected the James Bond films to continue until suddenly they didn't. So with the pre-boot, they just ignore the Daniel Craig era and carry on making James Bond films with 007 fully formed as an experienced 00 resurrecting the timeline dropped with Die Another Day, which leads me into option two. The soft reboot is similar to the first option. Bond is an established agent and goes on a mission, but there's no attempt at even loose continuity with what went before. It's Bond in a totally different universe. To me, this seems like the most likely way for them to deal with Bond's death, but these two are not the only options. So. Let's look at number three. Casino Royale broke with all the Bond films before, simply with its style. It was a much harder edge, gritty take on Bond. Timothy Dalton's film veered that way, but Craig's film fully embraced it. But much more fundamentally, it was the first Bond film to fully reboot the character, throwing him into the double O section at the beginning of his career. He was still learning the ropes, but... Do we really need to watch Bond learning how to order a martini again? We get it. Shaken, not stirred. I would say nothing about the codename theory, but someone is sure to bring it up if I don't mention it. In this scenario, James Bond is a codename that can be adopted by a brand new agent. In this case, we can continue the Daniel Craig timeline and pick up a new agent. Who will henceforth be known as James Bond? I know, I know. Some fans love this theory. But no. Option number five is what I call the sequel prequel. In this option, we can keep the Daniel Craig timeline, but explore what happened between those scant few missions we've had over the last two decades. A new actor plays James Bond in the continuity established by Daniel Craig, and we find out what happened between the events of Quantum of Solace, say, and Skyfall. Between Skyfall and Spectre, and then... Oh, uh, yeah... That's the entire Matera sequence before retiring, isn't it? But trying to fit a new Bond film between existing Craig movies is like trying to squeeze an Aston Martin DB10 into a parking spot made for a Fiat 500. This is currently my favourite option, The Resurrection. I previously mentioned that at the end of the novel, You Only Live Twice, Bond is missing, presumed dead. He reappears in Ian Fleming's final novel, The Man with the Golden Gun, which starts with a great sequence that has so far not been used in the films. Brainwashed by the Soviets, Bond attempts to assassinate M by squirting poison at him, only to be foiled by a protective glass screen which descends from above. I'd love to see this happen in a film. The writers just need to convince us that he actually survived No Time to Die. Or, I don't know, maybe they don't even need to do that. My final option is what I call The Return. Okay, hear me out on this. What about Pierce Brosnan returning as Bond? Have you seen him lately? In this scenario, the film starts with Bond being vaporised at the end of the previous film. The scene fades out to Brosnan snoozing in a hammock in Jamaica. He awakes and rubs his eyes. I must be dreaming, he says. 
And we follow Bond around Jamaica, where he's sipping vodka martinis, tracking down the finest beluga caviar, and going head to head with the locals at a high stakes game of dominoes. Bond just can't help himself, even in retirement. Is this one too crazy? So how do you think they'll bring back 007 in Bond 26? Drop your theory in the comments below. Let's see who can come up with something crazier than my option 7. And don't forget to subscribe for more 007 goodness.